Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. Well, guys, we're back again this week. Uh, we had to take a little bit of time off last week just because uh, work life got in the way. Right, that's Pat? Great. That's right, Austin. We got a lot, a lot of moving parts here. And we also, uh, you know, the U.S. had some friendlies there. And uh, obviously with that international break, we wanted to kind of give you guys more of a more quality content, a better recap. Right, Austin? <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah, we didn't want to uh, film after the first one and then uh, <laughs> post after the second one. It looked kind of stupid. So we thought... <laughs> Why not just wait Wait one week? We'll talk about the performances that just happened this week and then also touch on those uh, those performances in the friendlies. And it's not like there was too much to really talk about. I guess in that second one there was. At least but, uh, we can kind of uh, give a good summation of uh, you know both of those friendlies and what we saw from uh, the lineups and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, let's get into our episode. All right, guys, so we're going to start off with a player in Denmark who's been playing wise beyond his years, very mature player right now, Austin, and that's none other than? Yeah, that would be uh, Jonathan Amon. So, uh, yeah, Jonathan scored again this past weekend, also had an assist in Nordsjælland's 4-1 win, and just looked super active during the game. Um, his goal was a really nice uh, right sh- right-footed shot right around the keeper, uh, first time off a ball into the box. Um, really, really nice goal. Um, and just showcased his confidence, I would say, Pat, that he's been playing with ever since he's come back from injury um, for North Zealand. So That's awesome. awesome. That's good to see. Yeah. Just a, a, a quick uh, you know, uh, question, too, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is for the stars, but I, I know <laughs> I would really like to see um, you know, Jonathan get a call-up in the future here coming up for some of these friendlies. But I'm not right. Sure. right. Yeah, uh, uh, Sarah can stick with some of these guys that he's consistently brought in, or just being in Denmark. Is, um, you know, I not no, it's not a, not the Bundesliga or anything, but it's North Shetland's a pretty good team. So just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, and um, you know, we've we've said something similar to this before, but uh, you know, I think uh, Jonathan is definitely in Sarah plans. Um, you know, we'll see how long Sarah Kin's actually uh, this this national team coach. Uh, depending on what reports you, you read uh, nowadays. But, yeah, I think uh, I think Jonathan's definitely in his plans. Um, I just think since he was injured earlier on in the season, um, I think we kind of left him off this past roster uh, just to keep him at his team and, you know, keep him on that right track of getting games uh, regularly for North Shieland. Um And maybe just these opponents that we played weren't um, – the quality we wanted to test him at this early. Although I think, you know, like I said earlier, I think the confidence he's been playing with um, in these past few games show that he's he's ready for some some tougher tests, at least with the Look National Team. Rangers, Austin. <laughs> yeah, Perry Kitchen's old team. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't he captain, right? Or was that at Hearts, I guess he was captain? Yeah, Hearts, and then, uh, yeah, that was kind of his, uh, his downfall. <laughs> <laughs> but. Then he went to the Galaxy, and now they've been uh, – <laughs> They've had a downfall themselves. No, but yeah, exactly. I just yeah, I think you brought up some good points about uh, Jonathan there, and uh, he looks again poised if he stays injury free. Uh, yeah, absolutely that's, big season here. Yeah, that's the big thing right now is is just making sure he's, he's on the field. Um, he's had some some injury problems so far in his career, so just making sure that he stays healthy and um, you know, yeah, hopefully we'll see him in the in the red, white, and blue very soon. Um, yeah, he, he keeps killing it, man. I think he's got uh, three goals and one assist, I believe, in six games so far uh, for North Zealand this season. So, um, yeah, a player that a lot of people in Denmark are really excited about and a player that, that we want to see, um, yeah, in the near future for the men's national team. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, now going over to a player that we just saw in the men's national team, um, and that would be Cameron Carter-Vickers. So, Pat, what did he do this past weekend? That's right, Austin. We had a little CCV uh, debut uh, for a Swansea City in a, a 0-0 draw. So he did come on for the last, uh, I think it was 22 minutes he ended up playing. Okay. But, um, yeah, again, just what kind of uh, reiterate, he has had a, a pretty you know, good international break, at least w- with that game he played in a, you know, against Mexico uh, yeah. with Miazga, partnered there well. 
but obviously it wasn't Mexico's full strength team, but, you know, get the full 90, look, you know, domineering, you could say. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, I thought he, he looked very good in the air as well. And uh, coming on for, uh, again, like we mentioned, Swansea there uh, was playing pretty consistently. And, again, we touched on, I think it was one of the episodes before, the mm -hmm. young center backs that Swansea had that were, you know, not, uh, you know, not, not very uh, good, I guess to be honest with you guys. Not and, up to par? Yeah, not up to par. <laughs> so I think CCV has a great shot at breaking in with a quality team there that could uh, rise back to the uh, Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good opportunity for him. I think the Swansea's a really good place for him. It could be his, his permanent home maybe at, at the end of the season. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. But yeah, definitely. That's a good point too, Austin, because, I mean, it, it's just tough. I, I feel like Tottenham is not where he's going to ultimately end up. Yeah, no, I, I don't think – I know he just signed a contract at the beginning of the summer, but I think that was more for Tottenham trying to get a, a transfer value out of him, um, you know, when he en eventually ends up moving on. I just – I don't see him ever breaking into that Tottenham team regularly, even Definitely. if he does go back there. Yeah, I agree. And then just again, I think he is developing very well at, at some of these championship clubs where he's got some good loans. Um, so if he kind of continues on this path, uh, he could be a, you know, a great uh, U.S. men's national team center back. Well, we'll touch on it a little later, but <laughs> uh, like I like to see a Miazga-Brooks pairing, but uh, CCV wouldn't be a bad option either in there if we needed him. No, and I, yeah, I think um, you bring up a good point. I think last year he, he played so many minutes, um, so I think those loans definitely did help him, even if he's not a polished player right now, um, which we've seen some flaws in his game. We're not going to lie here and say he's, you know, the <laughs> next uh, – Jerome Boateng or Sergio Ramos or anything of that uh, that nature. But, yeah, I mean, if he keeps getting minutes in the championship, he's bound to improve. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Swansea City is a good move for him this year. That's right, Austin. And uh, just kind of shifting gears here back to uh, Germany. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. In the Bundesliga. And that's uh, none other than our potential, hopefully, uh, future great striker. <laughs> oh, Sebastian Soto? <laughs> not yet not yet not yet, not yet. Hey. But we'll talk about him a little later so um, you heard it here on yacht first guys, if he he make <laughs> yeah but but now we want to talk about josh Sargent. so over the international break josh actually actually got his uh his first uh i guess minutes with the first team since the summer um and he actually got a goal and assist in two different games uh during that international break so it was cool to see Josh finally um, get another chance with the first team after he's been playing really, really well for uh, Werder Bremen's U23s. Yeah, so, seems like Austin, sorry to yeah, cut you off there, but it seems like he's killing it uh, for the U23s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, he's, definitely, uh, he's definitely killing it for the U23s. It has been. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's very true. Um, and, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, uh, Florian Kofelt, um, their their manager, Werder Bremen's first team manager, there has seen you know all the things he's done for that U23 team and uh, gave him this, this opportunity over the international break. Um, which make of it what you will. Obviously, some players weren't on uh, in the in those games that they played. Right. So Josh was able to get some minutes because some of those guys uh, either weren't healthy or um, you know were away on international duty, but. You know, I think that's a, a good experience for Josh, and I think it shows that, you know, he's still, like, right there on the cusp of that first team. And, you know, scoring a goal and having an assist in, in two different games, I think that, that speaks also to, um, you know, the things he can bring to the, the first team if Absolutely. he gets a chance, you know, going forward in the Bundesliga. Absolutely, Austin. And, uh, yeah, just, to, again, exactly kind of the point you were just ending there. It just seems like just from some of the clips I've been watching and just um, – doing a little, little research, but uh, it just seems like he just has that natural, that striker's instinct, and as, like, he just makes these these great runs and his vision and just kind of his intelligence, it seems like. Um, obviously, he's not uh, – you didn't go over to Germany right away and start for the first team all of a sudden, scoring crazy right. goals. It really seems like he's uh, – I think I mentioned this before – keeping his head down, working hard, and he, there's just something about him, Austin. I feel like just that, that great striker's mentality that he has – uh, almost more more European esque. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, I think he's he's very similar to a lot of players that play you know over in Europe. He's not more. He's not. Um, I don't know exactly how I want to say it, but he's got that European mindset. I guess is is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Where 
no matter what happens to him, he's always, you know, looking to score goals, whatever form he's in. Um, and he hasn't really been in bad form in his career. Um, there hasn't been many times where he's, you know, struggled to, to score goals, um, at least for a long period of time. So, yeah, that, that mindset can only only help you overseas. And that was, a, you know, I think we, we talked about it a little bit a little while ago, that um, recurring theme of a strong mindset was something that was uh, very apparent in those rising videos. Um, I believe it was even in Josh's uh, rising video where one of the coaches or, or scouts for Verda Bremen was saying that, you know, the biggest thing about Josh that stood out to them wasn't his, his play on the field. It was his mindset and that he, you know, approached every training session or every game, uh, you know, with the same mindset of I'm going to go in and, you know, try as hard as I can or, you know, do my best. So and that's a very interesting point, Austin, too, quickly. I just want to touch on what you just said, because mm -hmm. we don't really see what goes on in the day to day life of training and stuff like that. And that's that's really where some of these these young players, you know, make their moves and, and, and push people, uh, some of the first team regulars out, out of the way there. And that's kind of where they, yeah. they the ladder. So there's a lot of lot of little factors and just the little things. Uh, just bonding with the team, I'm sure, in the locker room, that uh, and, and learning, learning the language too. Uh, it seems like uh, Josh is, uh, you know, making all the uh, the right uh, decisions here and taking all the right steps. Yeah, yeah, that's a really big thing. A uh, very underrated uh, aspect of moving abroad is is you know integrating into the culture and and making sure that you know you you're taking time to understand what environment you're in and you know what environment you're playing in every day. So. And uh, another, uh, I know, Austin, uh, we were talking finally. <laughs> finally, guys, another striker who uh, looks like he is, uh, you know, uh, continuing a great rise in growth, and that's none other than? Sebastian Soto. So Sebastian scored another brace, or what it seems to be another brace. There was some discrepancy on Twitter and some other uh, pages, because it is kind of hard to, to find these U19 stats. Oh, but, um, yeah, Sebastian looks to have scored another brace for Hanover's U19s. Um, this past weekend. So that brings his goal tally to six, I believe, in Germany um, so far. Um, so yeah, so Sebastian, uh, was I was watching some other clips on uh, on Twitter um, from, again, USMNT videos. Uh, had a some good whole, videos. Great account. Yeah. He's, he's a great account, yeah. So go follow him. That's our weekly plug. We always have a weekly <laughs> plug for him, it seems. Um, but yeah, I was, I was watching some highlights of Sebastian and you know, just some of the uh, the play he's had uh, for Hanover so far has looked, you know, pretty pretty impressive. Um, you know, and he's scoring at a pretty good rate. So um, he's really taken to Germany well. Um, and yeah, he's he's. Uh, we just want to, I guess, let you guys know that he's he scored again this weekend. And um, yeah, we'll see what he can do going forward with Hanover. I know that Chris Gloucester recently moved up to their uh, two team over there at Hanover. So if that's kind of the career path or the um, like the progression yeah, 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 path yeah. for players to make uh, the Hanover first team, at least from their academy, then maybe we'll see uh, Sebastian move up to that second team sometime in the near future. But, that's awesome, Austin. And, and just yeah, again, uh, some of these uh, you know these paths that young players are taking in Germany, stepping up from the youth team to youth team, or you know progressing up to the first team, uh, and also uh, another. Uh, uh, boomed American insight. So uh, <laughs> we're going to uh, check out that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of American players now over in uh, Germany. Um, it seems like a new one moves to Germany pretty much every week now, or at least, you know, every other week. So what it feels like, yeah. Yeah. And Sebastian's one of the, the brightest prospects. I think, uh, yeah, it's crazy to think that he could have went, you know, the college route and went to, California, but now instead he's playing in Germany, he's scoring a lot of goals in Germany. So, um, just shows you you got to uh, challenge yourself at the highest level, no matter what it what it takes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So uh, now let's let's move over to um, another player who plays uh, <laughs> in uh, the Netherlands, and we actually have two players I guess we want to talk about in this little episode or this little segment. And that would be uh, Pat. Who would it be? <laughs> That's right. We got starting off uh, Eric Palmer Brown. Want to uh, just make uh, a highlight there? He uh, had his debut for Nac Breda. That's right. Uh, in star boy uh, Andrea uh, Novakovic, uh, and for Tuna Sutar, uh, unfortunately, uh, well, I guess you could look at it either way. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no well, losers here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're talking about American players. <laughs> they, uh, you know, Nac Breda ended up losing three-two there and there. They're sitting seventeenth. That was 
just kind of going over some of their scores before. And obviously, uh, it's been a little concern just with uh, uh, Eric um, being at, left out of that first team, playing with the second team, I believe, Austin, right? Yeah, for a period of time. Yeah. yeah just a little Not bit. long, but still right. concerning. <laughs> yeah, so it definitely, um, you know, definitely nice to see him get his debut there. And uh, hopefully can continue that and, and start for this team and maybe improve their uh, their uh, their goals uh, allowed in because I think they're almost up to fourteen and they haven't played too many games. Oh goodness! <laughs> Obviously three this game, which isn't good. But um, uh, they're also again, like I mentioned, sitting towards the bottom of the table there. And uh, it would be great to see uh, EPB get back to uh, you know that good form. And also uh, Andrea again starting another game for for a team that uh, you know. They're on. They're they were towards the bottom of the table too, but still climbing up the table. So a nice win for them. And uh, again, he's he's looked uh, you know great in uh, the Eredivisie. So that's you know kind yeah. of a, a sort of a win-win scenario again, like you mentioned, Austin, uh, <laughs> the Netherlands there. Yeah, and it's good to see Andrea getting uh, you know regular time for that team. Um, it seems like they really trust him to be their main striker for the whole season. Um, right. And that's so exciting too. Play because, a lot of minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he just moved, um, you know, from um, um, what's the team? I'm forgetting the name. Telstar last Telstar. year. Uh, yeah, our boy Kyle Scott's a Telstar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, just you know, going up with a team that just got promoted. Uh, you're switching over there real quick, even on another loan. Like that, that's a that's an, another interesting, unique situation that uh, some of uh, you know an American player was able to persevere and break right into that lineup. So. Uh, it sounds like he's uh, working hard over there, and hopefully he can uh, continue to put in some uh, goals at the top flight. Yeah. Now we just need to see him uh, play again for the men's national team. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's but, true. But uh, Austin, another uh, – we're, we're going back again to Germany. Again, man. It's, it's the, uh, the melting pot or whatever you want to say. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. The cauldron. But... <laughs> but anyway, this is a, a great, I think, really promising uh, defender there, Austin, with Bayern Munich's uh, academy there. Yeah, and that would be none other than Chris Richards. So Chris actually scored his second goal this season for Bayern's U19s over the weekend. Um, however, it was in a 4-4 a draw, so it was a wow. little bit controversial. Uh, two penalties scored by, by the opposing team uh, against Bayern, so... Um, but Chris Richards apparently was was not at fault for for any of those goals, um, or at least not directly at fault for any of those goals. So that's um, good. I guess that's good to hear. Uh, <laughs> a little concerned about uh, the rest of the players on that team, though. Or the, I think one player, uh, I think it was actually two different players who drew both of those penalties or uh, conceded both of those penalties. But but uh, um, it sounds yeah. like uh, Chris Richards as well uh, with the youth uh, U.S. teams. Um, Got a little action there too. Yeah. So um, recently, the U20s uh, and the U19s played in a tournament, um, and the U19s actually won that tournament um, over the U20s. Although the game that both those teams played against each other was a little controversial with the red card. Um, so make of that, I guess, what you will. None right. of the the highlights of like the game footage was available, so you can't really see too much of them. Um, but yeah, so Chris Richards actually played with that U20 team. And was paired with Mark McKenzie for uh, most of that tournament, um, which is a very exciting, you oh, know, uh, center back partnership. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so Chris Richards uh, has looked really good so far in Germany. Obviously, we just said his, his second goal um, scored for Bayern's U19s, which is you know pretty impressive for a center back. Um, and yeah, uh, Bayern's U19s are out to a, I believe, a pretty strong start in the U19 schedule. Um, I didn't check the standings of the uh, A Junior and uh, Bundesliga, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, the, the U19 uh, league over there in Germany. Um, but yeah, Chris Richards, uh, from some of the highlights we saw of that game, I guess I want to get into that a little bit. So um, he looked like he was very confident on the ball, had a nice soft first touch. Um, and just looks confident when he passes the ball. That's um, great to see because we, we need a, a defender that can kind of pass out and uh, calmly you know, pass the ball out from the back. Yeah, and that can do wonders for, uh, for us when we you know, try to attack teams. Uh, you know, seeing some of the passes that John, John Brooks has played in the past and then also Matt Miazga somewhat recently um, with yeah, the national team. Points, though, yeah. they, uh, they ignite those uh, offensive series. 
So, um, yeah, it would be nice to see Chris Richards, uh, you know, continue to develop all season with uh, Bayern's U19s. And then maybe we'll see him at the U20 World Cup or at least in U20 uh, World Cup qualifying. I know he posted either on Instagram or Twitter something saying that he wants to be um, part of that U20 cycle. So we'll see if Bayern lets him go. I know a lot of clubs in Germany don't usually release players for these U20 uh, games, but you know, there's always a first and, you know, Chris Richard's situation is a little bit different than any other player in the past in the sense that he's on a loan. That's so true. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure if, if Byron has the final say on whether or not he can get released. If maybe FC Dallas has some say on it. Um, yeah. It's or, an interesting partnership. I'm not really sure, uh, you know, the details behind that. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I, I'm not sure if, uh, I guess it's a good thing. Yeah. I was going to say maybe it's a, bad thing if if he does get released because then he's not you know he's out of the lineup for the u19s but you know it would also be good to see him you know play for the the u20s as well and have that you know team do really well especially yeah, with those two center backs that we just talked about that's uh we'll crazy pairing. The defenders they're awesome yeah he looks like he has a really bright future ahead of him yeah i really like all the defenders on that u20 team to be honest with you jalen Lindsay, uh chris gloucester who we've talked about on this show yeah. Um, doing big things overseas. Uh, Serginio Dest, I'm always a fan of, um, who actually played as a winger recently. So uh, keep your eyes out for him moving up the field a little bit. Yeah, he's got uh, he's got the speed to do it. So, But, uh, yeah, so that's it for this part of our segment. Now let's go over to our uh, reaction to the men's national team friendlies. All right, guys, so let's start with the first friendly. Uh, we're going to analyze the USA-Brazil game. And unfortunately, uh, Brazil kind of got, got the best of us there, Austin, and kind of cruised their way uh, to victory there with uh, you know, the first of uh, that goal, that Bobby Firmino goal. Yeah. Um, was, was pretty nice um, for, for Brazil's perspective. Um, but anyway, uh, just to kind of start, I guess, on that play, because I want to start with a player, an Andrew okay. Austin, Austin. So... Uh, unfortunately for him, we'll, we'll talk about positives later, but unfortunately for this first game, uh, he, you could clearly tell the, the caliber uh, uh, from the championship over in England to uh, you know, a, a player like Douglas Costa, who obviously we know for club and country there, tears it up on the flanks there with his incredible you know, athleticism, his, his skill, just that Brazilian flair. Again, like yeah. you mentioned he- before. He uh, tears it up when he's not biting, elbowing, and spitting on people. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Those are all good points. But, yeah, um, he, uh, luckily he did none of those. Uh, but <laughs> he burned Anthony, as we kind of saw. You saw Sarah Ken actually uh, talking to Anthony on the sideline, like directing him, kind of, you know, uh, waving his arms around, trying to, you know, get him in the right spot. And he was a little nervous, I think, against uh, – a really almost full, full uh, strength Brazilian team, and yeah, he, I think he got embarrassed too towards the end of the game. Yeah, towards the middle of the game, I guess. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But, got, yeah, again, Costa burned him. Nice, beautiful cross uh, with Bobby Firmino kind of ghosting to the back there. Uh, so it was a cool finish. But um, just wanted to kind of touch on that. There was definitely a a, a a huge gap in terms of just the class of players. I know we're we got yeah. a lot of players, Austin. So against uh, an experienced Brazilian team, uh, which once uh, leads me to kind of my next point, is kind of the, uh, we've seen that 4-1, 4-1 that Sarah can likes, uh, and just kind of touching on the, from the six on to the mids and the forward there, uh, they had Trap, um, which uh, <laughs> I'm not huge fans of, along with Paul Ariola, Tyler Adams sitting in the middle there with McKenney, and I think it was, uh, who else was on the, the right there? Was it Julian? Um... Oh man, it's been so long now. Uh, I think I think it. Uh, it's really great. Yeah. And then we had Wood up top, but just kind of my my main point though was uh, trap to the midfielders to Wood, but just a horrible disconnect there. Uh, again, the quality was shown with Brazil, but they were not stringing any passes together. I think Bobby Wood, uh, the announcers were saying the first twenty minutes he only had like two touches maybe. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, definitely a disjointed game um, through the midfield. I, th- I think Tyler Adams played pretty well that game, um, or as well as you can play in a game where you're just, like, outmatched man for man. But, um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. Will Trap had 
didn't have a, a good game, obviously, against Brazil. And it didn't look like he really had a good game against Mexico either. So a little bit of concern, I guess, right. from this game. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. It just looks like he's a step behind. Uh, you can see he, he – it looks like he has that good, you know, demeanor, that good leadership if, if Sarakin's trusting him to, you know, even captain in one game. Um, yeah. But – but yeah. how much is that worth, I guess, when you're getting pummeled or, you know, you're not playing well enough? Yeah. Um, Again, there's not too many positives we can take out that. Yeah, too many positives we can take out friendly, Austin. As, uh, just, um, there just wasn't that. It was more of a defending game uh, for the team. But we can look at the defenders and say that Miazga and Brooks had uh, a few bright moments there. Um, I, they got tested a lot. So. They got tested a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. No, I mean, exactly, kind of the points you brought up earlier uh, in the past segment there. Um, Miazga and Brooks were able to kind of funnel it and play it out of the back uh, coolly. Obviously, then we lose it from there. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, Neymar had a few uh, daring runs, kind of got the crowd into it at some points with his little tricks. And uh, Miazga was able to kind of, uh, you know, hold him off a little bit, maybe not the most uh, uh, poised defending, but able to kind of just shove Neymar off and, make sure he wasn't as effective as he could be. And uh, Brooks, again, since he's come back from injury uh, for club and country, again, has looked really, really good. So there was a little upside for, for the center uh, back pairing there. Yeah, and I, I think one thing which uh, maybe we'll like to see in the future, instead of Will Trap in the middle, um, if we play this 4-1-4-1 uh, formation, is uh, maybe switching it back to Danny Williams, who obviously has been injured for a little while now, um, just came back from injury. But he was the, the player who played in that um, kind of that, that one in front of the center backs, that number six role um, for Port or against Portugal in that first game after the uh, Trinidad and Tobago game. Oh. Um, it looked, you know, fairly well in that, in that role since he's more of a uh, kind of like a bombastic uh, that's a good, that's a good defensive uh, <laughs> player, or at least center mid. Um, always trying to like win tackles and, you know, get a foot in on everyone. So I, I think maybe in the future, I'd like to see Danny Williams there instead of Will Trap, um, just to switch it up and, you know, get, get a different look maybe. Um, also a player who's playing at a higher level, which, you know. Yeah, in the prem, that's a good point, Austin. I think that, that – that's definitely a, a factor for why he would um, do better against some of these teams, um, you know. But we'll, we'll see. I think Danny Williams has a role to play on this team, especially because he was a captain for that Portugal game. So Dave Sarek think definitely thinks highly of him. Yeah, I, I completely, yeah, completely agree. Not to you know, piggyback him, but yeah, I think Trap, um, you know, is going to be replaced down the road. Um, with maybe a Williams. I think that's a really, really interesting point you brought up just with all the, the skills that he brings to the table and hopefully yeah. with more touches. <laughs> yeah. And you also were saying, um, you know, Tyler Adams could play that six role as well. Yeah. Um, I've been seeing off him camera. a little bit too from some other, uh, some of the other uh, soccer guys out there. <laughs> oh yeah. There's a lot of them. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I kind of like Tyler Adams higher up the field, to be honest though. Um, I, I think he could play that six role. I just don't think that's his best position on the field. Um, obviously, he's good at you know running around, causing havoc, and um, winning the ball back whenever and whenever other teams are in possession. But I just think him taking the ball forward, um, especially when he gets a better close control touch, which I think he's he's definitely improved over the past year um, to go along with that agility in those tight tight spaces moving up the field. I think that's where he could thrive more. Than if he plays as like a deep lying six, I just think he's too athletic. Unless he's that guy who just you know seeks out you know any ball that comes into the area in front of the center backs, um, I just think he's too athletic to kind of waste sitting back and just defending. I think he'd be um, more of an asset going forward as like a number eight um, position. I agree, I agree with you. I think that those are very good points. And um, as much as I want to talk about this great Brazil game. Uh, yeah. We got more action, at least, in the, uh, the USA-Mexico rival uh, for the next friendly Austin. So Yeah, there was action. There was action, all right. <laughs> That's for sure. We can, uh, we can I guess, uh, you know, if you want to elaborate a little more on uh, the Miazga, uh, I, I guess we could start there. <laughs> since that really uh, ignited the game or, you know, rejuvenated or something. Yeah. Like 
Yeah, so obviously the U.S. won uh, one nil against Mexico, and it was, uh, I guess, I would say greatly due to um, what Matt Miazga did to uh, Diego Linez, um, where he did like the oh you're you're the short yeah the little yeah. <laughs> compared to me um, a little <laughs> chirping a little chirp chirp uh, against uh, Mexico. Hey, you know what? I mean. Miazga kind of, I feel like he, he knew what he was doing. He is really developed into a leader, and he want, he's like, we need to change the game. It's a friendly. It's a little too slow. There's a big rivalry on a significant day. Um, so I think Miazga just, again, I, I think he really, really helped make the game exciting and you know just kind of, re again, revived the team. Yeah, because, you know, in that first half, they weren't playing so well. Um, you could say it was due to a formation, the, the formation that we were playing and what players we had in that formation. Um, then Wes McKinney went out, Julian Green came in, and things kind of opened up a little bit. But we still were lacking that, like, final um, fire um, in the final third or just, you know, that final attacking instinct and, and passion, I would say, maybe. Um, and I think that that um, incident obviously brought out some passion and then, you know, right after that incident, when tempers were still flaring, um, in my opinion, Mexico got that red card. Um, that was pretty brutal. <laughs> so, and, and that was a, a pretty bad tackle, obviously. Horrible. It looks like he, it was kind of just a mistimed or like a misplayed uh, move by the Mexican defender who was trying to like do a skill move or, you know, just take the ball back a different way and his foot went over the ball. But still, it was, you know, a brutal got, got hurt there, Austin. <laughs> it actually looked really bad. Yeah, when, when you watch that in slow motion, you're like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, no wonder that was a red card. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I kind of like it, too. Like, obviously, it's it's been much debated on Twitter, and, you know, people have a lot of uh, different opinions about it. But I kind of like how it has kind of brought some energy to this USA-Mexico rivalry, rivalry again. Um, you know, it's one of the best rivalries in soccer, to be completely honest. Um, I don't think that's, you know, an, an outlandish thing to say. I think, you know, in its peak – you know, when, when it's the height of uh, this rivalry, you know, it is one of those best rivalries in the game. And, um, yeah, I kind of like, uh, you know, the grittiest, grittiness from Matt Miazga to, uh, you know, kind of kind of chirp uh, the Mexican national team and uh, right. you know, get some people <laughs> upset with them. But uh, Austin also, again, right after that too, I know they're a man down, but uh, we saw Anthony Robinson kind of uh, redeem himself. That's uh, right. That's right. He showed you he, he can actually play uh, – against uh well i guess this mexican team wasn't that good to be honest with you it was a lot of uh, uh b or c team players they were saying and um some of the names on that team were yeah not their best players right. but uh yeah he definitely redeemed himself right i agree also i think they actually had seven uh players make their uh, debut um, oh okay so. yeah i did hear something about something like that so yeah that makes sense yeah, but uh, again, uh, I think Acosta actually uh, got the ball there, played it out to uh, Robinson, and he had a, a beautiful kind of uh, what was it kind of like cross on the ground there, back to a, a an Adams run, which I think if you want to touch on, it was fantastic. Man, yeah, Tyler Adams doing doing big things again uh, with that run. Just you know, great great recognition that there was space, um, you know, in in the box, and and he just ran into that space and cross came in, finished the ball into the back of the net, and, uh, yeah, 1-0 uh, United States. So, you know, that was that was a good, um, I guess, a good end to the game since it was kind of a, a bad game up until that uh, Miazga incident. Um, I think you summed it up pretty well on Twitter. Really. <laughs> yeah, 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 a lot of people summed it up really well on Twitter. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think one more thing we wanted to take away from this game was um, I, I really liked what Tim Weah did in this game. I thought – um, you know, I was a little nervous about him starting this game. You know, Mexico's a, a different beast than any other, uh, you know, game he's really played in so far in his career in terms of, you know, any game he's played in, um, even for PSG. So I thought he, he rose to the occasion in this game. He looked very um, confident with and without the ball. I thought he was also very vocal. And he kind of just showed this, this, um, this, I guess uh, understanding of the game a little bit deeper than a lot of other players on the field where he was, you know, talking to players saying, make this run. Oh no, give me the ball here. Um, I'm going to pass you the ball and then, then run here. And he had a lot of really good ideas throughout the game. Um, and there was a highlight video on YouTube that I saw, which really, really highlighted it. Um, 
best, you know, when you, when you watched all his highlights, um, you know, in one sitting, you could see how he was always thinking in every situation and, um, you know, not just playing a ball and, and waiting for something else to happen. He was always thinking of something else after he played the ball, which yeah, is yeah. really good to see. Yeah, I like Tim Weah yeah, for that. <laughs> yeah, right. Again, really good. Yeah, like Tim Weah just seems like he has that, that, that heart and desire and intelligence just learning from all those great caliber players at PSG and, you know, all the, all the coaching staff and things, things along those lines. So oh, we really, really hope that Tim Weah can – uh, kind of push back for some uh, first team minutes. Uh, I know PSG, if they continue a good Champions League run, I think that'll be a great, uh, great sign for Tim Way to kind of get back in that lineup and uh, you know make make some moves there. Uh, but yeah, again, like you, you said during this game, um, he he did show some really good maturity. I think, and uh, yeah. a lot of these young guys, uh, especially with this this interesting kind of point, our t- uh, the U.S. teams in uh, needs to show a lot of maturity. And we've seen that from a few of these guys. So that's that's a, that's a good point you brought up. Yeah. So that's all for this part of our episode. Now let's go over to Quick Kicks. And now, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for. You know what time it is, Austin? I think it's time for Quick Kicks. So you could test Wayne Miller. It's Altador over the wall. So to start off quick kicks this week, we want to talk about a player in England. So, Pat, who would that be? And that would be DeAndre Yedlin, who went the full 90 for Newcastle in an unfortunate 2-1 loss to Arsenal there. Uh, but we want to also shift gears to a player in the two Bundesliga for another uh, young Nat. That's right. And that would be Julian Green, who played 21 minutes for Greuther Firth and actually scored their final goal in a 4-1 win over Holstein Kiel uh, this weekend. Now shifting over to Belgium to talk about a player. So, Pat, who is that? And that is our boy Brendan Heinz Eich, who went the full 90, but unfortunately gave up a penalty and a one nothing loss to a Muscron there. Uh, but shifting gears again to a uh, defender we all love in France, Austin. That's right. And that would be Matt Miazga, who played the full 90 for Nantes in their 0-0 draw with Stade de Rem this weekend. Now going over to Spain, Pat, and who would that be? That's right. We have a debut for uh, Shaq Moore with Rio de Portillo entering, I believe, in the final uh, 20 minutes there. Uh, so it's great to see him get that, uh, that action there in uh, the second division in Spain. But also, uh, you know, shifting gears here, Austin. Uh, another, to- second another second division. Another second player. Of a different kind. Here. <laughs> and that would be uh, Tim Weah, who actually played for PSG's reserve team this weekend, scored a goal for them. Um, but unfortunately didn't dress for their league one match and also didn't travel with the team to their Champions League game uh, against Liverpool uh, this week. Um, so, yeah, so good that he scored a goal. Not so good that he's not with their first team. Um, and now to go back to England for our final player this week. And, Pat, who would that be? In another uh, debut for uh, in the league there in the championship, Dwayne Holmes. Uh, so he played the 17 minutes for uh, Frank Lampard's uh, Derby County. So great to see him get some minutes. And we hope for the best for Dwayne Holmes going forward. That's right. And now we want to end our show like we've have uh, the past few weeks and the past few episodes with our young ya. So that player this week would be Patrick Leal, who's a 15-year-old uh, midfielder who just moved from uh, the New England Revolution Academy over to uh, Portugal and now is playing for uh, Sporting CP's uh, academy team. The top so, club. Uh, yeah, a very good club who's got a you know great track record with players like Ronaldo, um, Eric Dyer, who also uh, came from that academy, um, or at least spent time in that academy. So, uh, yeah, yet another uh, young ya for uh, you guys to follow. <laughs> and as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. And again, we have Twitter, Instagram going. You guys already know. Hit that follow button and uh, keep uh, following our content. That's right. We got a, a lot of heated exchanges on our uh, on oh. our most recent Instagram post of the uh, Miazga Lanes uh, Lanes uh, you know incident. We got it's a that rivalry, awesome. It's that bitter rivalry. Oh yeah, it was a rivalry even in uh, the comment section on that post as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, again, thanks for uh, following. Make sure 
you know, like Pat said, leave that comment. We love to uh, interact with you guys as always. And Austin, I know, I know there was a, a bit of a bit of trolling just because uh, we missed out on the World Cup. Oh, uh, so much trolling! You know what? I think I, I stole your thunder a little bit, but uh, what what's that line that you're always gonna say? And it's gonna happen to all you Mexican fans. One day we'll win the World Cup.